do you have games and stuff or is it do we have games <laughs> like blindfold He's german Who's they don't have is it <laughs> <laughs> that we do play we always keep that jeff one. always wins <laughs> <laughs> jeff Forty always players. wants to play that game play. and i'm like jeff we're having a woman on right now we can we can't so play you, whose dick is it right now you are the homosexual <laughs> Or you're bisexual. This is how we're going to start this podcast, by the way. We're getting right into it. <laughs> or you're just turned on by men sometimes. <laughs> it's my favorite moment. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good way to say it. Oh, okay. You know? So yeah. you're like pansexual. Or you don't like a label. He's just sexual in general. He flirt with yes. anybody. He makes these. That's what he does. He, he'll do like these things where he's like, let's play whose dick is it. And he, he does it with my mom. I'm not even joking, mm. you know? So he's that kind of guy. He's. A weirdo. <laughs> That's what it is. No, we'll dive deep like into the it. sexuality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great start. That was a great fucking. <laughs> he knows hold exactly that thought. We We're going to get into it, right? <laughs> it's a me, Mario. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Uncensored. I love you, my little baby carrots. It's so weird. I have to stop it. I, I don't like think it. it, it I like it's just it. weird. Okay, okay. Okay. So, um, guys, today's guest is, um, he's right here. He's uh, Italian, sort of. Mm. He, his ah. name is the most Italian name ever. You, ha you might have seen him as a lead in eating out all you can eat. All right? <laughs> so give it up for Chris Salvatore. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Wait, can I ask? What is this again? It's a carrot. I love, because the thing, um, it's a little cringy. I'm sorry so I have to witness that. But I love, yeah, you can have a bite if you want. It's okay. great. I love carrots. Yeah. That should be ASMR. There's ASMR, yeah. <laughs> no, it's been a thing on my channel where I, I'm very connected spiritually to carrots. Oh. And it's kind of like the symbol of my channel. And it represents like a youthful, fun, silly side of me. Mm. So I call my, like my community the Carrot Kingdom. And the people in it are little baby carrots. But I started saying that only today. And I thought it was a little weird. You know, I'm still getting used to like, it. Like how Mariah called her fans lambs and yeah lambs yeah when i was that younger is, that is weird too <laughs> and i was like trying to think of what i would call my fans yeah a friend of mine was like you can call them cum dumps <laughs> i'm like what's up no, cum that dumpsters? is great <laughs> <laughs> but that was the old me that is phenomenal yeah. that's a great name that is a phenomenal name <laughs> i'm way behind yeah, yeah. so jeff what would your fandom name be called yeah god i, I kind of like the cum dumpsters that is so funny that sounds like a thing reno gold would say do you know reno no so when when he said reno is um he's a big only fan star he's so okay. funny he's one of my favorite people in the world and he he would use that word a lot too i'd oh, never no. heard it before yeah and you he never would, heard it he would say you know what he would say and we're in it. he would say um that is a quote this is literally a quote by him he said mario your abs would be such amazing we gotta blur this, Riley. Cum gutters. Oh yeah. 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 I like those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. What are you doing later? <laughs> there we go. So, um, Chris, you thanks so much for coming on. By the way, this is like, this, we have to stop this guy. This is too sexual. Right <laughs> okay. We gotta talk about politics for a little bit, and then you guys okay. can make out or do whatever. Okay. But okay. okay. So, um, Chris, thanks for coming on. So you're you have the most. We talk about this. Your name is so Italian, but you're not Italian. No, I'm half Italian. Half just Italian. from my dad's side. Okay. That's where the name comes from. Yeah. But my mom is kind of like a mutt, like French, Irish, German. Yeah. Um, I was telling you a little bit like of like Pennsylvania Dutch, like yeah. Amish country is kind of like where yeah. I grew up a little bit in Pennsylvania, yeah. just outside of Philly. So like not completely yeah. isolated, but um, yeah, I'm half Italian. Because the first thing you told me in the elevator was like, do you like America? And it was so <laughs> funny because like you... So I you, feel like Americans are having a hard time with America right now. Some don't. I, I've been to, I would just oh, went yeah. to some Florida. Some, some are really happy in really? America. I don't know if they're happy, but you know, I feel like. I feel like they, everyone is complaining, right? But everybody's complaining everywhere all the time. Yeah, yeah, Germans yeah. are complaining all the time too. You know? I, I was just. That. I feel what he's saying. I think we've yeah. kind, of, kind of the American empire. The American is dream kind of, is American dream. Yeah, not right really alive. Someone did tell me. What did you just say to me? What did you say to me? <laughs> Wait, how long how have you? you been here in America? I'll tell you one thing, son. The American dream is alive and well, right? <laughs> for, in for, my America, it is. For a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I've been here for four years. Okay. And I like America. You know what I mean? Well, someone, I see some flaws for sure, like yeah. everywhere. But generally, I fuck with it. 
Someone um, just told me LA specifically mm-hmm. is about to like really boom in the next 10 years. So it's like a really? great time to live in LA. It's like kind of like almost like the 70s coming back, like a lot of just like freedom happening in in LA specifically. LA and Paris, they said. This person LA and Paris, me. that's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. We're here. We're doing We're here. it. Here. Mm-hmm. So how how does that come about like what's the reason for it i asked all these questions and i didn't really get (laughs) a straight answer it was like oh some guy and i was like well does he study economics or like (laughs) i love that you're like we're basically this is not a fact because that's how internet works by the way some guy said something you said said it i believed it and now it's a fact and now and now yeah isn't that some sort of like effect like manifestation effect um yeah we're manifesting la to boom I, you know, I think yes. that's a very refreshing perspective. Yeah. Because usually I hear the opposite. Well, that's what I heard all We're, along. That's why I was so shocked. That's what it. I, I just, really? I went to Austin, Texas. And everybody in Austin, especially Hates in the it. comedy community, I do stand-up comedy, right? So yeah. everybody in that community, this guy, Tony Hinchcliffe, and like, they're all talking about like, LA's dead and mm-hmm. Austin's the new Hollywood and all this stuff, right? So you hear very opposing views on that. So I like it. I like, cause I like LA. I fuck with it. Yeah. It's just a little too slow. You know, things okay, a little so too need slow. Some, and it's something harder. Like New York energy. Yeah. Mm. You get it. Yeah, yeah. So what brought you to LA when you first came here from? Those eating out movies. Really? Yeah. Okay, tell me about those because I saw this on your resume. Not going to lie. I thought it was a porno at first. <laughs> right? Right? Am yeah, I, am that's I, a good porn time. Eating right? out all you yeah. can eat. And the, 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 the cover art, we can put the, uh, Riley put the cover art here. Yeah. You know, it was, was you shirtless? Yeah, it's like yeah. me and another yeah. guy shirtless, yeah. like about to kiss or something. Yeah. But there's actually two more of those movies before the first one that I was in. And there's okay. five total, total, which oh. is like crazy. So it was like one of those movies. If you kind of can pick, imagine like American Pie, how it's like this comedy, you know, based around sex and like, yeah, these, yeah. you know, people that are going through puberty. So it's like kind of this like taboo. Like, yeah. I feel like when it came out, it was very, it was still kind of like taboo almost sure. like him fucking that pie and stuff. Like people were like, God. Oh God, that's in a movie. But so it was kind of based on though, like it's not based on those, but that's what I compare it to if I'm trying to describe so it. So you fucked a pumpkin pie. Mm. No. I love how you had to think about that long. Oh, because I was going to do that for Halloween. And I'm like, did I ever get to do that? Or did for I Halloween? Just black out. Just to treat yourself? Yeah. Yes. No, no, like for like an for like, video. you know, for like oh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Lester oh was God. like, do you want to fuck a pumpkin for OF? And I was like, what a great guy. <laughs> maybe. Well, maybe. you're talking to the right guys here. You guys because, have. Let me tell you, we. Let me use some backstory. I love that you said the American Pie thing because that was my childhood in Germany. Awesome. I loved American Pie because those movies to me represented America. I was like, mm-hmm. "That's America right there," and I thought that was America. That's, I thought that was that's what America was going to be like. Also, you know. Oh my goodness! So I thought I was going to fuck apple pies with everybody, but you know, because nobody does here. You know, so, in, but now, yeah, you know, oh Europe is very far, oh. far more ahead. Sexually. Apple pies are very fuckable in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> far so ahead. I'm sure that was a disappointment when you first moved. You were like, "Why is Absolute everyone so fucking rude?" Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Nobody to fuck pies Why with. Aren't you fucking pies? Yeah. yeah. Rude what's the deal pies? with what's you know? Problem? People are not in saunas. Everybody's wearing clothing in saunas. It was strange. I you know? just watched your podcast episode about that. Yeah, how it's Ill- illegal, it's right? Good. It's it's illegal Why? to not you can, be like, nude. Hide if you wear clothes, no, it's, it's hygiene. Illegal. It's it's not oh, illegal. Hygiene. It's not a crime. It's just like the the like when hygiene. you go, it is required to be fully nude, and it's simply for the reason high. It's more hygienic because bacteria builds up in that, and then it gets so on you, the. So it's like yeah. really more hygienic when you fully um when you fully nude, and it's just much more normal. That's why I thought it was so interesting how in America you have on the one hand everything is very sexualized, but then on the other hand there's like a lot of things that are very taboo. Really? Yeah. So in your movie, then you had a similar approach as American Pie, like in terms of like breaking taboos and being very sexual, but gay. Exactly. Great. Okay. Um, like you know those movies, American Pie, not not another teen movie. They're like spoof movies. Yeah. So American Pie or, or Eating Out, I'm sorry, is like a campy kind of supposed to be almost just like ridiculous in a yeah. sort of way. And the reason why it was called Eating Out is because in the first one. 
there was a guy, a gay guy crushing on this guy who he thought was straight. And his best girlfriend was like, why don't we see if he'll eat me out and we'll test if he's gay or straight. Oh. So that's where it came from. And then subsequently, like the second, third, fourth and fifth, they're not about eating out at all. But yeah. that's just where it derived from. So okay. um a great, yeah. It's a great catching. Thing. Yeah, everyone yeah. always is like that. And it's so funny. My mom, before I left for LA 13 years ago, she's like, just don't ever do porn. And sure enough, the first, <laughs> first movie, movie I get is yeah. called Eating Out. And, she's, and then I also had a nude scene in it. So I, sh- I was showed my junk. Yeah. yeah. And so like um, full, full nude nude? Yeah. Like full I mean, nude? it wasn't like bonerific, but yeah. it was just bonerific. like soft. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Because I yeah. think maybe if it's a boner, then it's considered porn. You know, there's a lot, I think I nudity know. is nothing that's pornographic necessarily. It's about how it's yeah. shot too. Yeah. Like, you know, you've done like photos of see you book and everything. Like nudity itself is not the issue, I think. It is about the context. Right. You can be nude or you can be like nude. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's after I started my OnlyFans, like I kind of had this whole like sexual kind of I regained my power back because I didn't really make a lot of money doing yeah. those movies. And I showed a whole lot. And at yeah. that time, this was like a whole lot. 10 years ago yeah. or even longer, probably when we did Eating Out 3 and it came out, it was very like gay actors, gay out actors weren't really getting any work. Like they weren't being seen by casting directors. Yeah. You know, um, if you were in a gay movie or played a gay character, yeah. people kind of like, pigeonholed you so that was around that time and i was like oh geez like now i have to show my dick on top of it all you know yeah. um that's how i felt without any of the gay stuff even you know what i mean yeah i think it's a very common thing that you feel like you have to even in my like you know we did modeling and stuff and you feel show like a little yeah yeah, yeah yeah um i'm sure a lot of people feel that way and there's a lot of like you know weird things that happen i feel like in modeling and like on go sees sometimes that's yeah. just like very you know weird but sometimes it like actually became a fetish of mine this is probably weird to say please go ahead but yeah like, <laughs> um i love like a massage kink video where okay. like it's this fantasy of like you getting massaged by a masseuse and he like goes too far or something yeah where you're like it's not supposed to happen but yeah. it's hot because it oh, is not supposed to happen yeah so there was like a few times on Ghosties where I didn't stop it because I was like aroused by it. Isn't yeah. that weird? I mean, that makes sense. So, okay. Uh, it might be some sort of trauma so it to response, you, but. Understood. So it would happen to you that somebody would offer you a massage at like a scenario of like a job or like a casting or some, something. Or like, right? someone or would like be that. like, okay, so get down to your underwear and mm-hmm. let's see, you know, your package. And then they would be like, can you get it a little like bigger yeah. so we could see when we shoot it, yeah, it'll yeah, yeah. Fit, fill out the underwear because it's yeah, a little yeah. cold in here or something. Yeah. And then you're like. Yeah, literally. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Punching it. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, do you want <laughs> me to help you? And yeah. then it's like. Oh, my God. That is such a cliche thing. And you're like. So funny. Uh, sure. But I feel like that's trauma response. I think it's a freeze response. I feel like women who are not saying that I was raped in any way, yeah. but like. I fully allowed it to happen, but I feel like women say they didn't say no in those situations too. Wow, this got really dark. What's well, a power dynamic? No, yeah. it's a power dynamic. Power yeah, and in that scenario, you don't think rationally because it's like you're you're being you're insecure maybe because you're young, you don't know what's gonna happen, and yeah. it's it's tough to be stand up for yourself and be like, we had the same exact conversation last podcast by the way. It's kind oh, of fun, really? Where he text like somebody wanted to give a massage at like mm-hmm. some house it was like a big, you know, manager or whatever, and um. Yeah, sometimes you just let it happen. And, yeah. You know. Isn't that interesting? It's yeah. so interesting thinking about it. Because I'm 38 now. So, like, I feel like I've lived so much of all of that yeah. young industry, you sure. know, experience, energy type thing. And I look back and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. On a larger scale, like these larger celebrities or these larger, oh, yeah. you know, bigger names. I'm like, how do they deal with that attention yeah. times a million, you know? Yeah, 100%. So yeah. how would you deal with it now? If somebody now on the podcast would be like, hey, let's see your package. I guess it depends on who it's it is. It's a little cold in here. <laughs> like you guys are like, okay. degrees in here. Let's see what we're working with. 68 degrees. Or it's a little cold. Do you mind if I give you a hand? 
Like, I'm just saying, like, now with age, I'm just asking for a friend, by the way, but, like, I'm just saying, like, with age, I feel like you have more knowledge about yourself, your boundaries. You don't yeah. feel as easily influenced by those power well, dynamics. Very true. I've learned that I don't have a great deal of boundaries. I think mainly You're perfect because for this I, industry. Yeah. <laughs> you got what it takes. Then. I think yeah. mainly because I feel pretty ballsy. Like I don't okay. feel, it's funny. I feel ballsy, but I do still have a problem with caring too much about what people think. But I mm. feel like being ballsy is like my defense mechanism. Like I'll just be ballsy. I like to do things that are, that scare me. So it's like my Got trick it. that I tell myself if I'm like a little bit scared to do it. Like, I haven't done an, a podcast interview in a while. Like okay. I've been like super depressed. So I'm like okay. not leaving the house and I'm yeah, like, yeah. this is making me nervous to go Great. on the podcast. Yeah. That's why I have to say nervous, yes. Chris. You should be. Well, <laughs> yeah, in a good way. But um, I just think that's a good absolutely reminder for people who, you know, are stuck in life. You're stuck because I think you're not doing things that scare you. Uh, that's so great. I love that. Risk takers. Yeah. So that was exactly like on my YouTube channel. So that's one of the biggest no things. Like do what scares you. Get yeah. out of comfort zone. That was like, that's why I did all this. That's why I justified doing all this crazy stuff on YouTube because I have this in the back of my hand. It's always something that scares me. Like mm. that's why I started stand up comedy, by the way. That's amazing. I have to talk to you about that later because I've yeah. always wanted to be a stand up comedian. Then you have to yeah. do it. And especially if but it's it scares scary, me so much. That's why you have to do it. It's like the most even if you don't scariest wanna, job, I feel yes, like. 100%. People can like boo you at any <laughs> It's the you. Most, one of the most vulnerable things. And but that's why I think so anybody fun. should. And I think we just live often in this like state of like comfort because it's like, yeah. it's obviously it's safer, right? Yeah. But I think anything, if, you, if I think about my life at least, I don't know about you, but most people, if you, think, if you think about the most memorable things in your life, it was usually moments I was uncomfortable mm -hmm. in at first. But then they became amazing. Like on a smaller scale, I went on a hike with my dad. It started raining in LA. And we're like, fuck it, we're just going to go. And we got fucking lost. We couldn't see where to go. It was like a fucking hurricane here in LA. I don't know how. Shit. We're in Running Canyon, running around with that Dexter too. It was hilarious. Oh, Dex. And it was so fun and so memorable though, because it was so uncomfortable. And then after those, the moments you remember, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not the moments that, you go to, like when I was traveling a lot, I would go to Thailand. I would go with no money and hitchhike and just talk to strangers, make these videos. Much more memorable than going there on like a budget and going to like a nice resort hotel, wow, which is yeah. nice, but not as memorable if you think about your growth. Right. So, it, yeah. My mom always used to tell me like, like mom, I don't want to do it. Like as a kid, not now, yeah. but <laughs> she would be like, well, it builds character, Chris. It builds yeah. character. And it's very true, you know? It's character. That was yeah. one of the first things that turned me on to Mario sexually, <laughs> not sexually, <laughs> but uh, I met him a few years ago. We would be in Milan or somewhere. And he'd be like, throw that Borat suit on. We're going outside here in five minutes. Oh, and he just yeah. had this badass look. Like he was ready to take the risk. He didn't care. He wasn't phased by it. And after you do it, it's obviously a little embarrassing, embarrassing when you do it, but after you do it, you're like, I'm stronger. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. I love that about him. Yeah. I love that about him. I truly think that's, Early on, that's what I kind of learned. I had to do more. That's when I, w I went to, at a young age, to Peru in South America. Didn't know Spanish. Wow. You know, I told you I was traveling. And yeah. I was like, I'm so scared of this, but I got to do it. And that's when you, you get into this habit of doing things that scare you. And then you're like, oh, nothing's scary, really. Right. Because you always survive. And you it's always, like, unless you die. <laughs> you know, unless you die, <laughs> then you don't survive. But other than Fall that, down a waterfall <laughs> or something. <laughs> Yo, but even, even in Milan, we're at that club. It's 1 a.m. We're vibing. We're having a good time. And you go, hey, strip off. We had our Borat suits on underneath. And he goes, hey, strip your top off. We're, we're doing this right now. I'm like, what? dude, it's fucking 1 a.m. in the club. What are you talking about? He convinced me to do it. Bro, everybody fucking loved it. Yeah. Even oh, girls yeah, were jumping yeah. up like so cool. Y'all are y'all are awesome. I was like, yeah, I thought of it. I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's why I like I like pushing Jeff because he's a little older, you know, so I like pushing him out of his You're like, a little you know, older. Yeah. How old? Oh, have 62. a guess. Sixty two. Wow, you must be a vampire. You kind of yeah. got the vampire vibe. In LA, you know? You yeah. kind of got Nobody the vampire ages. vibe. Yeah. <laughs> so if you age, you're not you're not you're not doing but so, what you're saying is basically like exposure therapy. It's like where the mm, therapist tells you, go, like, say you have social anxiety. And the yeah. therapist says, 
because this happened to me. It is pretty yeah. embarrassing, but she was like, say hypothetically yeah. a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where it's not really a fact, but it's a fact. Okay. So my therapist told me you have social anxiety. You're very shy. So why don't you go? This is when she thought I was straight. She's like, why don't you, this was really long time ago. She's like, <laughs> why don't, yeah. she's like, why don't you go Wait, to you a, okay? This isn't like a game. <laughs> oh no, I'm straight. Yeah, bro, yeah. me too. So. Um, <laughs> People are so confused right now, by the way. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but keep going. Yeah. Um, so she, she, she thought you were gay. Are you straight? <laughs> bye. So, She's like, wait. I bye. genuinely don't know anymore what's happening. I guess that doesn't really matter for the fact that like she told me to go to a Starbucks and draw a stick figure and like go to a cute girl and hand it to her and say like, I drew this for you to, to bring about yeah. a, a moment of shame or embarrassment 100%. to kind of trigger the embarrassment on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So then you can learn like, Oh, it's almost like cold plunge therapy too. Like oh, yeah. putting your body in uncomfortable situations. And like, that's where you grow the most. And yeah. that's where it's the hardest. Cause we don't want it. Yeah. We don't want to feel uncomfortable. You know, I did the same thing. It's so funny. I read the book, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And there's like a comfort challenge you have to do. Mm -hmm. And similar things. I would just talk to girls and um, ask them for stuff. Or I would give, I would buy flowers and just give them to somebody. Like stuff like that I would do. And it was amazing. The stuff that I've, I've just ex experienced life in a more dense way. Because we all go about our days, was in New York at the time. And everybody's in their own zone. And People are waiting for you to break that though. Mm -hmm. Like when you go up to somebody, you give them something and, you, and it's unexpected and weird. People crave that, you know, especially at Starbucks. They're like doing this like job day in, day out. They just want that. And I like breaking the norm. Yeah. In whatever I mean, way it, possible. It, I think yeah. it cuts their day up, you know, yeah. it makes their day go by, by slower. And like, yeah, you know, when you're making minimum wage, it's like, yeah, you work hard too. Yeah. <laughs> so. So it's I try to be nice to all service yeah. industry people yeah, just because like for really that kind of back, guy, yeah. like yeah. I try to make them feel super special and like yeah. make them smile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give them a little clap on the ass, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just make them feel extra special. <laughs> little, one step too far. <laughs> one step too far. <laughs> well, job so in the kitchen. Though. You know, it's interesting that you say that with the social anxiety because you didn't, to me, you don't strike me. I know, like isn't that so at weird? All. Like when I saw you, even you were very warm when I just, because we just met like five minutes ago, basically, right? Yeah. You immediately seemed like very, you know, friendly approachable well thank you yeah. um i guess i've like done a lot of the work you've hit on enough girls at starbucks and now you're <laughs> yeah. yeah it was like 20 a week no just kidding. <laughs> um i guess i did a lot of work but i think what really has helped is um like just being an actor and like doing acting classes because like yeah. i remember that was something that really always scared me like going to an acting class because you think you see all these, like hear all these stories and you're like, oh my God, that sounds so embarrassing. They had you barking on the floor like a dog. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. why would you do that? Yeah. But like, it just allows you to be like super uncomfortable. And then you learn like, yeah. oh, this isn't really that bad. And this is actually kind of fun. It's like more like being like a child, like and like playing, you know, like, oh yeah. As adults, we just that's don't do true. that anymore. Yeah. More childlike. Yeah. That's a good analogy. Mm -hmm. And not feeling like, a shame to express that side of you. Yeah, because that's what we, as kids, we had that freedom to mm -hmm. express whatever we was. Yeah, we, we don't cry. We don't we're know anything. You cry, yeah. you know, you don't suppress anything, but now we have to be these like alphas. Mm -hmm. You Everybody, don't like, you don't like, we don't have alpha? to be, but no. society. And the society puts you, you have kinda, a role, right? We all have a role. Yeah. So you get back to that. That's amazing. Especially improv was helpful for me also. Oh, I need to improv, get into an improv class. Improv is like what I recommend for any, I think anybody should go to improv class, regardless of whether you want to do acting or not. Because improv is that skill of like, there's no script. You don't know what the script is or what people are going to say, but you, you, you just get up on stage and in the moment you have this trust that something's going to come to you. So then you take that trust outside to where if you're at a date, you, you're going to just trust that in the moment, things are going to come to you. And that's one of the, like, that's confidence to me. You know, when that, that trust is, connects you so much more to the present moment. When you don't think about what you're going to say, you don't think about like circumstance, how people perceive you, you're just present mm -hmm. and you know that things and you react and listen. That's improv. And that's such a life skill. 
That probably would help someone who's socially anxious as I well. I 100% recommend <clears> that. <throat> and it's just, it's fun too. You know, it's silly. It's like the same. Improv is like, I think, one of the best yeah. tools. It sounds like an improv. Have you taken Guys, an go improv, improv class? Go to, go to Groundlings, use promo code <laughs> MARIO10 to get 10% <laughs> off your next class. Right it's right here. It's this is where the class is. <laughs> this is the improv. Yeah. You're right. This is very zip, much like zip, improv. Zip, yeah. zip, 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 yeah. zip, 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 Oh my God. That's, that's awesome. Funny. So now, okay, you started acting, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did the eating well, out I started one. like singing kind of. I started yes, uploading I covers on YouTube. Yes. Like the first one I did was like Katy Perry's like, kissed a girl but i changed it to i kissed a boy of course you did yeah, yeah. so that was like back then and then i just started uploading all these like female pop artists cover songs onto yeah. youtube and then that's how i got like a little bit of a following and then i did eating out and it kind of <laughs> okay. yeah and then i eat ate out yeah nice fuck yeah yeah so okay then the transition was from from music because i saw you just uploaded like a couple months ago you uploaded another uh billy eilish i saw that oh yeah so yeah. i'm writing a new I, I don't know if I want to say album, but it's in, like an EP right now. So it's okay. like, I have like six songs that I want cool. to release in the next couple months. I don't know when this is coming out, but yeah. yeah. Six months from now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll all be dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's awesome. So what's your main passion right now? Because you have acting and you have OnlyFans. Singing and right singing. now. Singing yeah. is the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, cool. Because I have like a studio in my house. So I just yeah. like wake up super early in the morning and I'm just in there all day long. Like sometimes I even forget to eat and like I can pump out songs like really fast because I yeah. know how to do music production myself. Oh, yeah. So okay, you, it's yeah. all kind of like a one stop shop. And okay. then I work with like another producer that helps me mix it and master it and re-record yeah. what needs to be re-recorded. Oh. So yeah, but that's my main passion right now because I feel like I just have something to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And how does OnlyFans play into all that? When did that happen? So, when did you start on OnlyFans? So I told you how I showed my dick in eating out. Yeah. I was saying, I think I was saying this, but then we got sidetracked. But I didn't really make that much money off of the film. Yeah, like yeah. I made like 800 bucks or something yeah. like that. And like I don't get residuals. Like I don't mm -hmm. get any of that stuff. So... I was like, I want to reclaim my power back and do an OnlyFans and be nude yeah. and get my money, you leak, know? Leak my own dick pic. Yeah. That's right. So that's basically what I did. And I've been doing that for almost three years. I think it'll be three years in June. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you have OnlyFans? Yeah. Oh, great. Sort of oh, you have OnlyFans too? Does he have OnlyFans? Okay. Yeah. He is the original gangster. Oh, you are? Of OnlyFans. I made... Only fans what it is. <laughs> no way. Yeah, dude. You I changed fucking... it from softcore to hardcore. <laughs> so is it you have you sex name with it, women? he's done it. <laughs> <laughs> Every object is on the table with Mario Adrian's. So when I talked about oh, the okay. carrots earlier. The <laughs> carrot. I ate the carrot. No, um, no, so I do so <laughs> Sorry. Like a rumor start. Sorry it's like about somebody that. Jeff always says these things. Um no, I exclusively bang dudes. I'm kidding. No, no <laughs> listen. No, I. It's, we're just going down this road. People can't have to subscribe to find out. You know what I mean? You're no, right. You're right. You're here's right. The thing. I, uh, I started OnlyFans as a, a social experiment. Okay. Where I made YouTube videos and I was like, hey, I made OnlyFans for 30 days and made acts. That was like the idea of it. And this was like a fun. I donated mm -hmm. all the money. But then I had this community and I was like, oh, this oh, is Oh, that's dope. really sweet. You know? <clears throat> so I, um, I had, oh, you know, I, I donated it to, uh, the uh, uh, the National Rifle Association. <laughs> okay, you don't need That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No, I'm kidding. Okay. What's up? It's a joke, right? It, it's a joke. Yeah, yeah. Because you said like you, you donate the money, you're like, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Like, you don't know what <laughs> I donated it like, to. Oh you know God. what I mean? <laughs> 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 I donated it to like a conversion camp. Yeah, like a conversion Trump's legal. Yeah. Theme. <laughs> <laughs> God, I just had a lot more dick pics for that, you know. Yeah. But it is really, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but then it became like this community. I felt very empowered, and I was wondering about you because now, to me, it's like OnlyFans is. Where I also have a comedy special, OnlyFans. It's, oh no way! It's out right now. Go to OFTV right now. It's an OnlyFans comedy special. Guys, yeah, quick announcement: I did a full comedy special on OnlyFans. I'm just, I'm just really good at uh 
jawline. So if you want to see that for free, go click the link in my description below right now and I'm going to send you a free link to my OnlyFans special. It's 100% free. All you got to do is go to the link in my description below, fill out the form and I'm going to send you the free OnlyFans link. It's just something I want to share because I'm very excited for you to see it. I cannot wait for you to see it. So click the link below right now or after this video. So it's almost like OnlyFans. I love the freedom and, and that you can monetize your audience, build a connection, community, and then you can finance your creative your project. pursuit, right? So is that how it's like for you in music as well? Yeah. That, I mean, that's that the, whole, the only way I would be able to do it. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. expensive. It is, right? Yeah. So when you do your music, is it like, um, what is the, what is the overhead? Like the Cause you do a lot to yourself too, right? Well, time, that's where I save a lot. But yeah. since I just moved and built the studio, yeah. I had to expense all of the, well, not expense, but I had to buy all of the, yeah. you know, equipment oh, for it. Yeah. And all of that equipment is very, I mean, you know, it's like some of the same equipment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that's what was able for me to even build the studio, you know, right, just yeah. like be there all day because music is like something where it needs to be set up all the time. It's hard when you have to like get out a keyboard and hook it up. And it's like in the moment you, you have an idea or a melody or a verse and yeah. if you don't put it down in your phone or record it or something. Yeah. It's not going to happen. And the Brilliant. way I yeah. work is I like to write in the studio so I know what it's sounding like. Oh yeah. You know, I'm in not, the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not one yeah. of those people that will like write it in my head first and then write mm -hmm. it all down. Like I like to be with the microphone and the dark lights. Yeah. And the big speakers. Like <laughs> I like that vibe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it in your mouth like earlier. Just like, yeah. I like to feel it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, that's probably some ASMR <laughs> some ASMR right there. Yeah. So how do you feel about creatively with OnlyFans and the branding of that and being a musician at the same time? Because I personally always felt a little afraid of that and how people would perceive OnlyFans while also pursuing a more traditional creative yeah. passion. Right. It's definitely tricky because I feel like not everyone is like us. Like they're not <clears throat> more free or more or yeah. less inhibited. Yeah. Um, so I feel like for me, it was hard because I was known <laughs> for taking care of my old neighbor. I saw that. I saw the video. I showed them earlier. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like yeah. that happened after eating out so it was already weird to like be nude in this movie about sex and gay yeah. sex and then take care of this thing and then all these yeah. women all over the world are like who's chris salvatore and then they're like oh but oh, then yeah, when yeah. i made an only fans that was like even more obscure yeah, so it yeah. was like so when i think about like the music and i think this is a good thing for you to think about like there's always another extreme that pe someone will try to limit you from mm. so for example if I let like the whole taking care of an old lady and because I'm compassionate and kind and empathetic. Yeah. Stop me from making money on OnlyFans because people will think that what I'm like a stupid porn star. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then cut to my music. Like it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. I've, I, I feel like there's no rules and I feel like that's like my message here on earth is to like show people to show and tell that like you can piss on the rules. Yeah. Like the that's rules are made by our negative intrusive thoughts, I think. Yeah. And you break the stereotype and the expectations. Of yeah. That and do whatever you want to do. Yeah. That's great. I like that. It's because like we always are thinking like as entertainers and in yeah. industry, like, there's someone higher up that like there's some gatekeeper that won't let me in the room because I have an OnlyFans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I used to care so much about that. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't need to go in your room. Yeah. I don't. I have my own room. Yeah. I, I have make my, my own, own room. room. I make so much money. I buy your room. Yeah. And, and it, then it's my room. <laughs> and it doesn't even need to be about material things, but it could just be about like the room that you made that yeah. you love here. Yeah. You know, I don't need to be in your room if you don't like me because of xyz yeah because i like myself that's great i love that i love that and there's gonna be there's always gonna be someone who will want you to be in their room 
And there's always going to be way more people who don't want you to be in your room. Yes. So I say you're not making it any harder on yourself. Yeah. You're just limiting yourself mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by based on what other people believe. Yeah. Well, as long as it's authentic for you, yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Right? Because if people don't want to do give you something because of who you truly are, you don't want to work with them anyways, right? Exactly. So that's like the and then also I would make the argument that some people might want you to go in their room because you have an OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So, hey, just think well, about that. Well, now after hearing you know this I mean? podcast, they're, they're calling me hey, up. Your inbox is hey, going to be... Hey, do you want to audition for this, yeah. <laughs> for this film? They saw the line. Guy there in the, underwear? <laughs> <laughs> they, was, they saw the line when you said, I as a person have no boundaries. And they were like, I got to call this guy right now. <laughs> Which is not... You made yourself very attractive yes. for a lot of people right now. <laughs> yes. In therapy, I'm learning more boundaries, but I typically think that I have a very low threshold. Where do you think that comes from? I think just being like, just feeling free. I just always have been a free spirit and yeah. I just feel like that is kind of what drives me. Oh, so you mean boundaries in the sense, oh, I understand now. Not boundaries when other people approach you and you set your boundaries, more like boundaries to what you do in your expression. Like for example, being nude to you felt not not as much like it felt normal right you just express yourself that way both. so you were boundaryless in that way you mean both got it okay yeah because there are ways where like people come up to you and then you know you they cross a boundary that exactly. is so like you makes set you your boundaries with yeah. those people yeah yeah but i was having a problem being such a people pleaser that i wouldn't have any boundaries yes, so too. i just let people walk all over me me too but like i wouldn't mind because i like helping people but it's yeah. not a healthy dynamic. So yeah, no, I had to try to learn how to. Would that show up also in relationships and stuff like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just in my last relationship, it showed yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. Yeah. I had um, my wife. She would trample over me. Mm. And I took it like a little bottom. <laughs> <Yeah>. A bottom. <laughs> no, I did. Um <laughs> Not not sexy. She used to say no, no, not, <laughs> not physically, guys. Not physically, okay? I have carrots for that. No. <laughs> for, no, but that's that's a good point. I can relate to that a lot. I'm a I'm such a people pleaser. Jeff is yeah. not. I don't think Jeff is. Like Jeff no. and I, we operate so differently. The Bora thing in Milan, he brought up earlier. We made a video. We had police detain us in, in Milan because we were w- public one indecency? Sick fell out or something. We're all oh. crazy about it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> So then, yeah, public, because, but we're wearing, if, if a woman wore it, it was fine. So it was like a with little sexist also, but whatever. It was right. It was definitely not regular clothing in mm-hmm. Italy, but it was also fashion week. It was during fashion week. So we're like, oh, we're high fashion. You know, we're like, oh, the Bora too. Anyways, but then I was very like complying. I was like, okay, yeah, Mr. Police Officer, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, uh, do you want to give me a massage? I was like trying to appease him, <laughs> you know? And then Jeff was like, no, this is bullshit. <laughs> Show me the law, <laughs> you know? Well, I would say in the industry, though, I was very similar. Um, yeah. As like, okay. I, not necessarily I wouldn't give in all the time, but yeah. I would always never make it seem like I was offended. Or, Got it. Or right. Not, not like confrontational. That. Exactly. Got yeah. It. Even if I didn't want to do what they were asking, I would say, oh, you know, laugh it off. I would never be yeah. upset or anything. So that way. You're smart about it. For sure. Yeah. A people pleaser, I guess. But. Yeah. 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 I'm real life a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> real life, <laughs> real life. <laughs> in this life yeah. in the industry yeah hey, i mean yeah with it's a I different think, life it's i think jeff life. with anybody is so funny i think jeff with he's very confrontational with anybody who's an authority like uh, i feel like that like i've seen him, it's so funny i've seen him with like people who tell him like you can't sit here or park here you can't get into this club He's like, this is bullshit. I'm an American, you know, god damn it. You know, it's oh, no. so funny that like that that authority thing is um it's definitely I see that with you. Well, they say freedom's the highest vibration. That's what I'm That's saying. Right. Yeah. I just had a medium read my fortune, I guess, and then she listened to my spirit guides and they all told her that I was born to come to this earth to show and tell people what freedom looks like wow. and to piss on all the rules. That's why I'm talking about this. So it's yeah, yeah, this is great. This is and your then, journey. Yeah. yeah. I had a little music, music box from my grandmother. Cause I put a bunch of things that I had from, you know, people who have passed yeah. in front of me on the phone call with her. And I had this little music box from my grandmother. And a couple of days later, I 
wound the music box because I didn't put it away yet. And I'm listening to the song and I'm like, what song is this? It seems so familiar. And like, I hadn't really noticed the song before. So it's kind of just been in a drawer, you know, it yeah. was broken too. So it's not really usable. And I look on the back and the tune is Born Free. Isn't that Born crazy? Born Free? Born Free. Is it a like, I was proud to be an American. No, how, how does, does it go? Born Free. Wow. How does it go? <laughs> do you know how it goes? <laughs> do, do you ask him the wrong Maybe guy, by the way? a real you know, song. It was an American song. Um, I forget how it goes, but. But it's about freedom. I love the song yeah. like uh, Born Free. Do you know the song? Born I want to- free, free as the wind blows. Da, na, 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 na. Have you heard that song? No, but I know the nope. German, the David Hasselhoff song. I've been looking for freedom. Oh, I like I've that. I've been looking so long. I've I like the face when you freedom. you make when you sing that. Till the search goes <laughs> on. <laughs> That was so fucking. Totally that, I love David Hasselhoff, man. He freedom. The same thing yeah. in Germany when the wall came down. You know, Jeff remembers back in the eighties, nineties, whatever. Tough times. Yeah. Tough times. He was, yeah. <laughs> the wall came down, and then everybody was like, "This is a sense of freedom," because like now the East East Berlin people could like be free and travel and shit. Mm. It was like this united freedom. You know, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, freedom. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Freedom from the uh, the gatekeepers. Yeah. Freedom to sell your own schlong. My own schlong. Your own My schlong. My dad is so fucking proud of me. He's yeah. like, if you ever, he's like, I'm thinking of doing a fairies only fan. Like a what? Dress up as a fairy. Like, you know, have you heard of fairies? Oh, oh, I saw, I saw, I, saw, I thought furries. Furry. <laughs> <laughs> is it no, my both accent? No, I said fairy. fairy. I yeah. said fairy. I thought furry. You, yeah, okay. Furry. I thought, no, I saw you like, but fairy. a fairy could also work. You know, furry. I saw you with like little wings and a little sparkle. Like, yeah, little, little, yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, he wants fairy. to do a, fur, a furry. Hold on. Your dad fans. wants to do a furry only fence. Yeah, he's thinking about it. He's, oh, he's, he's the furry. Yeah. Oh, so he's hairy. Mm. Mm, well, he would dress up as an animal, like in a animal okay yeah. what animal mm, he talked about a squirrel he dressed up as a squirrel mm-hmm. a little cut out for the penis yep the nuts you got any of those oh the nuts yeah he's searching for nuts that is amazing mm. oh because he said because i'm because i'm nuts yeah i gotta collect my nuts so what does your dad do for a living he just retired he okay, worked at and the now, airport yeah he, where did he work before he worked at the airport at the airport mm-hmm. okay and now, and now he's retired. That's, a, that's so now that makes like, sense. The job trajectory, airport to furry, furry only fans. I think yeah. that's like makes sense, right? It's yeah. like a, mm-hmm. dope. So okay, I think it's more of a joke not to let you know anyone down. But I mean, <laughs> I'll be. I think people crush it though. Like older people, a son dad duo collab. <laughs> <laughs> That's right up my alley. <laughs> Something tells me that that would be very popular. Oh my god! There's this thing. Have you seen the? What are the? I mean, even with my friend Dennis Dozio, like there's something about like family members. Yeah. What? What's the guy? Like the the, the step parent. What's the fucking name of the guys with the weird hair? The uh, the Florida boys. The Island boys. Island the boys. Island Boys. Mm, yeah. the Island you know boys? that shit? They, have, they, have, they, have, they made out or something? They and, yeah. Yeah. and their they son out. and dad? They're brothers. Oh, they made yeah. out. Wow. Yeah, they said they made two million off that. But they're really, they're really insecure million? in podcasts. They get asked about it. And they're really insecure about it. Which I don't know why. I mean, own that shit. You did it. I think if you own it, it's like anything you own fully, it's so much better for, you know what I mean? If you go like, yes. I killed that guy. Okay. But like, if you go, yes. No, if you own that shit, you know, like, yeah. it, the Reno Gold is a good example. You know, you, you talk to, some people are like weird about that or like shameful about whatever they do, even like OnlyFans. Right. A friend, Reno Gold, he'll walk into, he meets my mom, everybody walks into the room, he goes like, uh, oh yeah, what do you, oh yeah, I do OnlyFans. I, I did like the best, the, uh, the longest jerk off scene I've ever done last week. And I did like five cum shots yesterday. And the fifth one was still a lot. And he just talks about it so openly. I and love I that. I love that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's something I respect. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you, if you own shit, you do it. That's, that's everything. Yeah. So your dad, just fucking own that shit. Be a little <laughs> I'm gonna squirrel tell him to furry. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dad, what's your dad's name? Frank. 
Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Hi, Sal- Salvatore. No, do that shit. Own it. Be the nut. Mr. Be the, Salvatore. Be the nut. Yeah. Be the spin. Yeah. Yeah. Something he would say. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your dream? What's your dream, Chris? With music? Would you um, want to be just touring? Or is it just self-expression? Like, what's your... I mean, mainly self-expression because okay. like I've just been doing music for so long and like I'm not like a big, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, not many people even know I sing. So I think mainly it's like self-expression because it was my first love for sure. Like music and singing. OK, that's what I did first. Yeah, in life, I feel like. Um, but yeah, I would love like I'm working on really cool stuff right now. It's different from my older stuff because it was like more pop stuff. Mm-hmm. But now it's more like disco. So yeah. I'm really excited to like have this new era, you know? Disco. Yeah. How do you feel about German techno? Love it. Really? Mm-hmm. Are, you ready for, are you ready for, like, have you gone to like a German techno club? No. Will you take me? Oh. Oh. People have to go. People have to find out about this. It's like, it's such Jeff? a different way of partying. It's not this like. Oh, I've been there. Oh yeah. Jeff's been. Yeah. Yeah. You don't leave the same. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> well, you might. You might. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have- <laughs> yeah Actually. it's intense isn't that those the ones that like never close it never yeah. closes never so people can never. just stay for three days yeah literally yeah and weird shit happens very sexual too very sex positive yeah very kinky kinky you remember my f- friend niklaus told us a story about how he was having sex there with a woman and then a, in a dark room and then a guy came and switched out no docked from behind oh him yeah Wow, Without. that must feel really good, actually. Yeah, but kind of unannounced. Other people call that rape. But <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, wow. <laughs> I had a friend that told me that in one of those clubs, he laid in a trough and let everyone piss on him. Wow. Yeah. Was that in yeah. Germany, too? Yeah. It has to be. Wow. Mm-hmm. He so laid always in the bring trough? It up. He laid in the, the ice trough. And they pissed on him. In the ice trough? Because I know the trough for the urinal. Like, oh, the urinal maybe it's that trough. one. Yeah. Is there ice in it or no? Uh, sometimes when they dump ice from the... Uh, yeah, whatever yeah. They yeah. Ice he said for, he like yeah. laid in like that yeah. trough where everyone... Why you get an ice bath and then they say, that's wild. So it's so like he did cold it. and then warm. You know, that's sensory. beautiful. Wow. <laughs> deprivation. So Not I just logistically wonder Overload. how that works. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Which you, one? Do you sign up for that? Like, was that his thing? Oh, like do you consent? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. I'm I've sure been he... asked. I've been asked if I wanted to pee in somebody's mouth. Oh, I've yeah. done that. How was it? You've peed in somebody's mouth? Yeah. Oh, cool. What was the scenario? Um, I mean... Like, was it was it like at a club? Was it on a podcast? Like, what was the... <laughs> <laughs> like, what was it? The podcast. Um, yeah. No, it was like... I think it was just at my house. Like, it was just like a date. Oh, just a date, yeah. yeah or I was like in <laughs> like first date? <laughs> yeah. Probably one of them, I think was. Yeah. Wait, how but many I don't think that's so far. Wait, one of them, how many golden people... showers, like pe- kink. Yeah, yeah, urine. sure. Like yeah, people yeah. drink urine. Yeah, I'm not judging. I'm actually just curious. No, yeah. I don't think you're how judging. many so but how many people have you how many people have you provided urine for? Mm, like a handful. But I've handful. also received Oh yeah. So what do you like? Are you a urine top or a bottom? In piss play? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's first. Are you gonna have to blur a lot of this out? Possibly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is you know uncensored. what? It's fine. It's on to this podcast is far from monetized, so we're good. We can just you know. okay, okay. Oh yeah, because they stop monetizing when it's like too sexual. Huh? Oh, we start. We came off the bat swinging. Like, we, there's no way this podcast we started with. I don't even forgot what we started with. Like some very sexual stuff. So I think we're we're good. Uh, ah. Yeah. Keep going. But we're here, so let's go let's yeah. continue this flow of urine. Yeah. Yeah. You're asked how many times or what I prefer, top yeah, or bottom. Are you like a receiving or a, um drinking or yeah. providing. providing. Yeah. Um I guess providing because it it is still like shocking. Mm. Sometimes. I, but some people are really into it. Providing do you get pee shy? When you piss in somebody's mouth. Yeah, you can. Mm. Is there something you do? Have you ever peed in someone's mouth? Oh. I've not, no. <laughs> is it close we're, to coming in someone's butt? Or is it, it feels like, I a, bidet. Guess it's it's like, like a bidet. <laughs> like a warm. Wow. Like Jewish, I guess. I want to try that. But where do you do that? 
logistically. If, I think I'm it feels better for, for the person peeing. Like after they come and they pee inside. Inside? Yeah. Like how, like inside, like inside? Like your dick is still inside and you okay. like, after you come and you, if you have to pee, you can just pee inside there. Where does it go? Well, then they have to run to the bathroom and like expel it. Wow. Yeah. Ramen is fully hard over here. This <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, so like, <laughs> funny. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> but you gotta like squeeze really hard after the person comes out of you. The last thing I wanna do after sex is pee. Like right after. I like, think there's like ten minutes after, yes, but sometimes, I think you're supposed yeah. Well you can stay in there. Well, I'm not bit. that advanced, you yeah. know. Haven't you heard of like soaking? No. I think I've heard of the term, but I don't know what it is. I think it's where you like in the straight community where I love straight community because there's no community. But you know. <laughs> well, I guess I would say like people who, people who are a man and a woman who have like a vagina and a dick. Yeah. If the dick is in the vagina mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it just sits, stays there soaking. Yes. yes. And then someone like jumps on the bed and like moves them. Well, that's what. Okay, I Isn't think that what they do in Utah I, or something. Yes, that's what Mormons do. Oh. I think or whatever. I think it's not Amish Mormons. Because that's not considered sex. Right. So that's how you... Uh, yes, I heard that. Somebody mm -hmm. told me about that. It's not considered sex, so you're still... Yeah. Because then you have the someone person. else making the movement. So you're yeah. just like sitting there and you're like... Yes, you're like so you ah. got to hire a third person. <laughs> that is so funny, though. <laughs> you got to hire a dude to fucking... Yeah. He's the bouncer. <laughs> but I don't know. I guess it could be kinky because, like, someone else is in the room, you know? Yeah. So, I don't you know, know these kinks kind of make sense to me when it comes to shitting though i don't i'm not really sure did you see vince mcmahon the owner of wwe he paid they said three million in hush money to a girl it was like a secretary he brought her in there he he and this other executive fuck her then he takes a shit on her head says hey i'm gonna go shower up i'll be back comes back in a little later keeps fucking on her head and yeah what's the what's the is what's the kink there just completely taboo just a power thing. Chris, explain to us the kink you know, there, because you obviously know. <laughs> the the yeah. piss in the butthole, like, that's turning me on, kind of. But the shit on the head, I don't know. That one goes right past me. I mean, I feel like we all want to have sex in a way where, or most of us want to have sex in a way where there's not a lot of cleanup after, because, like, who wants to do all that cleaning? <laughs> Unless they, hi I guess he hires other people to do it, but, like, I mean, if you pay three but also it's for, just very yeah. it's a lot more pungent than pee i guess so like it's just yeah. i don't know maybe it has to do with just overloading all of the senses i don't I know i think it's power oh and humiliation <laughs> really shitting on what's more humiliating than shitting yeah. on somebody but i don't think all of scat play is based upon humiliation i think some of them enjoy sh rubbing the shit on them right Right, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't know that. But wait, when he says scat play, that is with poop, fe with poop, scat play. Mm. Got it. I'm but learning a lot so of, much. Yeah, a lot of gay men, like on Twitter, I see, like when they'll talk about someone being hot or they're attracted to someone, they'll tweet stuff like, "Oh, I will until the basically they say until the room stinks, huh, or until the walls are covered, like." they would fuck the person until there's just poop everywhere. <laughs> it has become a lingo that I yeah. see on Twitter. Isn't there something that like things that are taboo are in the same brain region as like yes. sex? So and I think, think that's that probably what it that, is. Like, feet, poop, yeah, like, there's a lot of those yeah. taboo things mm -hmm. are a little, mm -hmm. maybe it stimulates the same part of your brain in a way. Yeah. Very Did you ever see that movie? everything everywhere all at once yeah amazing movie. how they have to like do something weird to like get into that yes yes that's cool yeah such a great movie Side that note. Was amazing yeah. movie. yeah yeah no you're right you yeah, forgot that yeah i forgot that they do like weird shit yeah huh so we're we're here we're in the, we're <laughs> we in the really, world of like kinks right yeah, now yeah yeah this is amazing so what is your does your <laughs> position in peeing in somebody's mouth reflect your sexual position in sex. I guess slightly, yeah. Hmm. I, I would say that I'm a verse bottom. Because I Got like it. to be stimulated that way. And then I also like to top. Got it. 
He's Dope. a verse bottom where you are exclusively bottom. You're exclusive <laughs> bottom. It's a little different. You're a power bottom. <laughs> no. You know what? I think about like my, my thing with, with women, how I like, and I like being in control there. Because uh, it's safer to me. It feels safer somehow. But that maybe it's hard, it's hard to say because like a woman is obviously I'm more masculine than my, than my wife. But then if somebody like you came around, I'd be like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. It's interesting. It's hard to think about that because it, it, I think it's truly who's, I mean, generally it's who's more masculine, right? In terms of an, an mm. energy. Like I would say, it can there, be. Isn't I there think like that's a correlation like what between, people think, I guess, is the most obvious. Isn't but there I, a correlation though between if you see somebody who's like physically masculine, say like more body hair, more like physically strong yeah. versus like a um, twink, Twinkie, right? Yeah. You would expect the role to be clearly yeah, but sometimes it's not. And yeah. that's always fun. Yeah. That's always fun. That's yeah. what my uncle is. He's about 400 pounds. Just a beast, hairy, obviously fat, and he is exclusively bottom. And yeah. a, was it a bear? Was it a bear? Bottom bear. Bottom that bear. Thing? Yeah, that would be a bear. Bottom bear. Bottom bear. It's much like your other movie you were in called Bear City 3. Oh my God. Speaking of bears. Yeah. Is Bear City 3 also a gay movie? Yeah. Or is it like and we filmed actual it at, brown at, bears? No. No, no, no. Oh, Got I it. wish. Like that movie. Like cocaine bear? Cocaine bear. Yeah, I thought. Literally, I thought, yeah. I thought it was like a, like, you know, the bear shark City movies where it's like three. Bear City 3. I thought it was a horror movie where bears are rogue and just attacking people. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it could be. Yeah. Um, bear City. That we filmed in Pennsylvania on oh. a... Um, nudist oh. campground the campground i think so i don't know maybe look it up it's in pennsylvania somewhere yeah. a nudist it's like maybe one of the only ones but my dad came to set and he was like interesting your dad is so <laughs> i love your dad what a guy what a guy That's hilarious. so what was Frank. the movie the movie was just like uh was it also uh was it like so like they sexual had, in a way or so just i nude? guess like just like eating out like yeah the bears had their movie and it was bear city. And okay. I was, I was a, I think I played a DJ. I yeah. wasn't a bear, but I played a DJ in that movie that was like DJing at the nudist colony or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a real nudist colony. There was real people staying there that were extras. All nude extras. Lots of naked bears. Yeah. Lots of nude extras. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Yeah. Do you know how much, how much would a nude extra get paid asking for a friend? I think they just got free drinks or something. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was a love bunch of game movie. They do it for the love of the game. That's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Would you I love you guys. Would you, you guys do? are great. Yeah, this is so fun. This is like. <laughs> I just, a nudist colony. I kind of want to try it out, but it's kind of intimidating. You know, just walking around. If it's cold outside. Because I was at Burning Man, and I'll tell you one thing. There's a camp, they're called the Shirt Cockers, which is like they were at Burning Man. You know Burning Man, right? Yeah. So like, so in the desert, and it's just like all these dudes wearing shirts and no bottoms ever. The whole Burning Man, basically. Mm. Bunch of people naked. And seeing these guys that are like hippies from San Francisco, and... This guy's so weird, but like the sheer size of their wieners <laughs> made me never join, made me never want to join a nudist colony. You know what I mean? Oh. Also, one dude, it's like actually kind of traumatizing. And I hope the same thing has happened to me. His ball sack was hanging so low. <laughs> These but, are straight men? I don't know. I think so, possibly, maybe some gay. Mm. But one boss like, was hanging so much on the other one. And I was like, he was riding a bicycle. And I just had this image in my head that it would, the, the boss like, would get stuck in the bicycle. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> and I think those people who are nudist colonies usually are packing. Am I right? Well, a lot of them were bears. And like, I find it like so cute how it's like the belly and then it like kind of is like covering the... <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, can we also, can we please shut the fuck up here? We also, we can wrap up in a second. Uh, how long have you been rolling for, Bach? Okay. Sorry. Back to the bears with the dicks. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a hit. Wait, so you asked, oh, you think people that are nudists are usually packing? Yeah, because then I feel insecure sometimes when you're not a shower and you're walking around in a colony of showers. 
you know what's so interesting? And I have something that might be able to help with that. And I can teach your girlfriend to do it on you. Okay. But I bought this machine. <laughs> it's a shockwave therapy machine. And you ha- have you heard of shockwave therapy used for ED, erectile dysfunction? Uh, Jeff has because he's Googling that every morning. But <laughs> no, no, I haven't heard of this. actually. So basically, I used to smoke those nicotine vapes. Uh huh. And what happens is like, I was smoking them for so long. It's like it, the nicotine shrinks your blood vessels. Mm-hmm. And the first place it usually does is in your balls. Whoa, so that's an ad they should put on. Or for not the, your balls, but your. Stop kids from vaping. <clears throat> yes. So the shockwave therapy it uses sound and you just use it on your limp dick. If you know, you don't get hard. You don't have to be hard. Well, and well, it, I didn't say that I. I didn't say that I have ED, okay? I'll tell you one thing right now, Chris. No, I'm just saying for your I'm followers, known. like, maybe they should, because people do it, you can go and get treatment for it in, like, in I, offices. There's treatment options <laughs> yeah, for There's you. treatment out there for you. <laughs> right now, this is an intervention. I but be- I did it on myself, and I've noticed that I've become more of a shower now and not a grower. Like, I feel like no, that's what I want. lower. I don't oh, care yeah. about getting and hard the for my wife. Are I huge. care about What? It grows the veins. Where do you get this thing? I on want, Amazon? Yeah. Amazon. Yes. What? You don't need it. We're going to test it out. <laughs> We're going to test it out. What the fuck? I'll bring it For over. Real? Are you serious right now? Yes. What so it does it is it stimulates work. blood flow and it, it, it creates more blood. Does it hurt? Vessels. Yeah. Does it hurts? Really? Okay. Kind of feels a little good though. But I kind of like pain. Yeah. So how often do you have to do that to get those veins you're talking about? Um, Like a couple times a week. Okay. You will notice a difference after the first try. Really? Yeah. So what does it look like? Is it like, like some, is it like some, it it's like, like some, the, it I'm looks like, some know. like fucking device. Yeah. Like a movie it's like a big like, little like, device. And then it has like a gun. Strut, like, come out <laughs> like, of, and then a tube. And then you just like, it's like touch screen and you press it. Yeah. It's really evolved, but I got it for my neck. <laughs> I was about to say, Not is it usually my okay. dick? Right. Wait, you but got I, it for your neck? Yeah, you just test it. Is okay. Is it is it made? Is it designed for your dick? Yes, they have started using it for your dick, but I think primarily it was used for yeah, yeah. you know physical I therapy. You just tried it. It's like me trying a hypervolt or something on my you know my dick all of a sudden. What's a hypervolt? Oh, it's like this like the massage guy next to you. You know, oh, like okay, yeah, yeah. which is actually very common. But like I'm saying, like you just I thought you just used the device that's like for something else and then you just put no it no no it came with set. instructions for ed how for to use ED. it for ed good yeah. okay that that's yeah. better because i just thought yeah. you because i would i was afraid i was gonna blow my dick off or yeah. something you know it sounded like some time travel like yeah. you know like lightning strikes coming out i was like no i'm not gonna i'm not yeah. ready for that i mean i don't even know if i'm even allowed to have have this and uh, use it i mean I, yeah. I definitely am not allowed to operate it on other people but i have what are you doing later <laughs> this, is, this is perfect for us because i feel like you and me we don't really care about being nude, but we hate the discomfort of always having to floss because we're always aware. Because that know? pulls the blood away because you have a little bit of anxiety, right? Exactly. So I think exactly. with this device, like it brings more blood into the area and it's always kind of there. So like, I don't really have that problem where I like, it just, it feels like it hangs lower. And we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta do something right now. We gotta wrap I gotta, it up. Hey Siri, we've got, <laughs> that's crazy. Are you serious? Yeah. So you're saying that vape? Okay, what I'm taking away from this podcast: vaping makes your dick shrink. Not only vaping, nicotine. Nicotine. Yeah. Constricts the blood vessels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Throw, Throw those, those away. Sigs away. Throw them away right now. <laughs> Holy shit! But I think vaping was even worse for me because. I was doing it all day long inside. You know, you can't really do that with yeah. cig- like it kind of forces you to not smoke I think as much. Cigarettes are in some ways better in that sense. Yeah, it's not accessible. So. Yeah, yeah. This is not you can. I mean, you can get addicted for sure. And people, my, yeah. my, my, my parents smoke cigarettes. You know, yeah. But it's still better than vaping. Where you, I have, I was working with an editor on the music video, uh-huh. and he just like I remember this. I was like, holy shit. We were. He was talking. He was nonstop for hours, and I was with him for like three hours editing, like together, vaping in enti- the entire he. Took more vapes than breaths. You know what I mean? Like it was crazy. I mean, I used to be like that. Yeah, legit. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so addicting, man. Yeah. God damn. It's like that muscle memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, good. No more vaping. Do you vape? No. 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 I've had. I've tried to vape. Whenever people have it at comedy clubs. I know. I'll like, like, oh. be like, oh, let me. Yeah. yeah. 
Do you smoke weed? All day long. Work. I think that relaxes the blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think I start That's hanging fine. lower. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying that weed makes your dick grow? Yeah. Cool. I think so too. Cool. Cool. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Quick disclaimer, guys. Don't take any of this as medical advice. Okay? Yeah, I think you need to put a disclaimer on this for no, sure. It's legit. Oh, my for God. For some reason, when I smoke weed, my testicles hang about three inches lower. Really? They are chilling, bro. Oh, They're nice. relaxed. Because you're relaxed. Yeah, that's what happens. Because yeah. when you work out or you're in a high stress scenario, your testicles like. <laughs> That's the sound mine makes. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of it. You know, they just go, beep, 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 beep. We all have different sounds. Wee, wee, wee. Yeah, that really obnoxious one. That- yeah, 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 yeah. Have you tried a penis pump? Yeah. Yeah? How was that for you? I've tried the automatic one and I've tried the like one. You're an you expert. You're a penis, sir. I have a lot of toys. Yeah. Wow. I think I have every toy except for like what I want, really want to get is like a whole body toy. A whole body? Yeah. Nice. yeah. With like an already hard dick. Mm. Just hop on it. <laughs> Ride it. That's legit. You know? But I. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, why would you need that? As a, I feel like if you're gay. I don't know. I think it would be cool to just make a phone call right now. How realistic. Yeah, but then you just don't have to deal with it. Anything else. Yeah. Yeah. But realistically, challenge right now. You know, if I, if I right now gave you like $100,000 and, or like for each, okay, I'm going to pay $100,000, but each minute that passes, you lose 10 grand where you, until you have sex, can bang somebody. Like how long would it take you? This is a horrible way of explaining it, by the way. No, I get, I get. What was the fastest? If you right now, if I told you, hey, you got to bang somebody ASAP. How would you do it and how fast could you get to get it done as a gay man? Seconds. <laughs> Seconds? Yeah. 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 You just go on Grinder. Yeah. What's your opening line on Grindr? Um, WY. I don't think I have much in my bio, but I w- there is some cuties in, near your grid. I think they live in your building. Look. <laughs> He's already checked. That's so funny. Can I see that actually? This is your grid. <laughs> just for, it actually? I'm just looking, this is my grid. Yeah, like this is like. Yeah, I've seen this guy. A lot of people live guy. in your building. Look at that guy. Oh, yeah, I do. Seven, one, 24. Okay, interesting. Yeah, probably seen some of these guys. Of course. Of course he is. Yeah, he goes to my gym. Uh, he's good. For, I did stand-up shows with him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is so funny. <laughs> this is so funny. So wait, okay, hypothetically, all right? This is, you can say hi to him. My name, my buddy. He just had him. Um, but yeah, he's, Say hi. he's Say, in my hey, gym. Hey, this is Mario. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Mario. <laughs> oh my God, this is so funny. He's going to be so confused. I see him at the gym all the time and I chat with him. That's so funny. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I literally texted him, hey, this is Mario. You got to send me later what, what happens with that. But, I yeah. will. Um, yes. Guys, check out Chris Salvatore. I'll show you book real quick. Oh, yes. Also, show you book. Sorry, I forgot about these, that. Yeah, these books. Whoa. Yes, look at that. The cabin, cabin. comes with the postcards. rugged. The cabin. The cabin. Also, I saw a naked butt in the yeah. back. We have to blur that on in here. You have That's to blur awesome. it. Yeah, yeah um, on YouTube, it's like they're not as into that, but you know, it's cool. Let me just show you. Oh my god, these are cards. Yeah, these are postcards. They're like ten by. They're so high quality. Or eight look by at ten. That. Wow, it's pretty high quality. It came out really well. And then this is the front of the book. It comes in this slip cage. And then let me just show you like the first, I think the first page isn't, oh yeah, that's kind of new, but you can blur it. There you go. Good, good job. I mean, obviously, I mean, I mean, the electroshock definitely worked, right? It I did, think, right? I think it's safe to say that that should really did, work. Right? I mean, that's, that's amazing. No, we, that's great. That's awesome. I, I like, I like what, I, that's amazing. Good, what good, a good nice job. Dog. Dope dick, dope dick, bro. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Chris, thanks so much for coming on. You're so, you're so thank sweet. Thank you guys for guy. having um, me. Chris Salvatore, everybody. Guys, stay on Censored. New episodes every single Wednesday. See me on Stand Up Tour. I'm coming all over the US. Oh, um, uh, MarioAge.com for stand-up dates. I'm going to Seattle, Chicago, Detroit, all over the US. I love you, and I'll see you next time.